Kia ora. Uh, I'm Mandy, and I am here from Toa Toa Aotearoa Commons. We are the successor organization to Creative Commons Aotearoa New Zealand. And we do pretty much what they did, with the exception of a few extra things. So we provide uh, training and support to government around the implementation of the New Zealand Government Open Access Licensing Framework, uh, as well as copyright and creative commons training to libraries, museums, the glam sector, uh, as well as schools and nonprofits. And I have five minutes to take you through 125 pages and 97 questions of a copyright issues paper. So. I'm going to have a sip of water, and then we are going to spin through this quickly. So, copyright reform. So, New Zealand is at the early part of our process right now. This is straight from MB. For those of you who don't know, MB is the Ministry for Business, Innovation, and Employment in New Zealand, and they are the ones running the review. This is from them. If you'll see here, we are at the top of what is a pretty long process that doesn't actually end with a bill yet, or it ends with a bill, but it doesn't end with a law passed. So we have a ways to go. The review has some objectives that MB has shared. Um, they want to figure out how well it's meeting, they want to identify barriers, they want to put together a plan, yada, yada, yada. So, the issues paper. I have spent, since November, cuddled up super close to this issues paper, um, as has everyone else engaged with copyright in New Zealand. And I am going to walk you through very quickly what the issues paper has to say. So, our law does not currently have a set of objectives. So one of the first things that the issues paper asks is, should we have a set of objectives? What should the, those objectives be? And MB went even a step further and was like, hey, here are some objectives. What do y'all think? And here they are. Um, I expect that everyone is going to have their own particular spin on them. The one thing that I will point out is missing from these objectives is an explicit one devoted to public benefit. So. I will be rewriting that into the submissions that I'm involved with. Um, and I imagine other stakeholders have other interests. One of the things that's particularly interesting, one of the questions that they said is, there's nothing here on technological neutrality. Should technological neutrality be written into the objectives is one of those 97 questions. So beyond the objectives, there is rights. Um, so, they're talking about data, computer-created works, because governments are super into AI and how we're going to handle it once we have AIs creating works, um, rights reversion and resale for visual artists um, and other sorts of artists, crown copyright. So crown copyright is something that I spend an enormous amount of my time dealing with the fallout from. And the question that MB is really asking is, what's the purpose of crown copyright? What does crown copyright, um, how does it impact on your daily lives? So in what ways is crown copyright making it harder for you to do the things that you want to do? Um, primary, secondary infringement, author authorization, and user-generated content. And again, it's 125 pages, there's a whole lot more. Um, limitations and exceptions. So MB has specifically asked us about uh, fair use and fair dealing. And right now, we don't have an open-ended exception at all in New Zealand. So one of the things that MB is exploring is, would such a thing make sense in a New Zealand context? And what problems could that solve for you? Uh, what they've really asked us to be specific on is not so much what our clever policy ideas are, but what are the barriers that we're facing in our day-to-day -day lives? And how can um, copyright be used to fix them? So, Cloud computing, which is a problem in New Zealand, we don't explicitly legalize cloud computing. Uh, and to what extent has that stopped us from doing cloud, cloud computing activities? Um, and how can the law support those better? <sighs> Data mining and AI, parody and satire. We don't have parody and satire, and parody and satire is a beloved New Zealand tradition. So it's the sort of thing <laughs> that we should certainly make legal and accessible for everyone, and not just the folks who have enough money to hire a lawyer in the event that they're sued. Quotation, exceptions for libraries and education and ISP liability. Transactions, so our collective management organizations, the way our tribunal works, um, platforms, blockchain, orphan works. We're quite keen to get an orphan works uh, regime in place for New Zealand. Right now, we don't have one, and our glam sector is extremely risk averse. So without something clear that people can use to rely on in their day-to-day -day work, an enormous amount of chilling happens. So people don't do things because they're afraid of getting sued, because it isn't explicitly provided for in law. So if we could fix that with this review, 
that would be really good for the glam sector. Uh, and then, of course, enforcement. It was interesting, one of the questions that they asked specifically was around groundless threats. So part of what I've spent the past few months doing is going around and being like, so has someone threatened to sue you and they couldn't really sue you? Uh, and collecting that data. Um, ISP role, border protection, and going to jail. So there are a few things that are particularly ripe for change. So we need a data regime that makes sense. Um, I talk to people about data, and I have to explain about the whole. So the data itself isn't protected, but a compilation of data is protected. And then people are like, well, what if it's in an API? And I'm like, yeah. So the Copyright Act was written in 1994. And having read it, I honestly think that we're picturing, like, right, there's a graph, and it's on a page. And they really didn't foresee what would be happening today with data. Uh, and we have an additional complication in New Zealand law where it is widely believed, perhaps incorrectly, that CC0 can't actually be used. And it cannot be used under the NZ goal framework. So we need to make sure that people have the ability to use data without running into a license stacking situation. Uh, let's see here, computer created works, online user generated content, cloud computing. So we need to work on the balance. So I think especially the idea of a resale right for visual artists um, is probably an important one. Crown copyright plays into that, uh, and so do orphan works. So, and then we get to the public interest. Right now, New Zealand has exceptions for educational institutions and for libraries, and you have to be a prescribed library, so it's a fairly specific list. And there are all kinds of other organizations doing amazing work who would really benefit from that exception, not the least of which would be our colleagues in museums. So one of the things that we're particularly interested in is making sure that our museum colleagues get the protection that librarians already have. Um, we're also quite keen for the idea of what we're calling safe harbors for public benefit. So whether it acts as a liability limitation or whether it acts as some sort of other safe harbor structure, what we need is the ability to say, I have done my due diligence on this, I have worked through due process, I am working in the public benefit, therefore, whatever the consequences of this infringement are going to be, it's not going to bankrupt my institution. So some form of safe harbor there so that we can all do the work that we need to do with confidence that a mistake isn't going to be a catastrophe. So there are some things that are off the table. Duration, um, with some limited exceptions, MB has said quite specifically that they are not interested in duration, with the exceptions on the screen. Renegotiating treaties, so a lot of what I do involves going around to people who really don't know anything at all about copyright and delivering copyright 101s. As I have done this in the course of encouraging people to develop their own submissions, one of the questions that I get at every single workshop is, let's just burn this all to the ground. Um, we're not going to be burning it all to the ground. We are not going to be renegotiating the treaties that provide the framework for copyright. And we are also not going to be reinventing the wheel, right? We're going to be making some really good, useful policy advances. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're still going to be operating within burn and trips and UCC, et cetera. So another part that's sort of unique to New Zealand is New Zealand is New Zealand is a country that was founded with a treaty. So for those of you who are familiar with the Treaty of Waitangi, that is that treaty. I've put it up here on the screen. Um, one of the things that we have that's been going on is what we call the tribunal process. And the way that works is claimants go to the tribunal, the tribunal hears the cases, they then provide a response, which will suggest something that the Crown can do to remedy the situation. Um, the Y262 is the claim that relates specifically to intellectual property. And MB have come back to us and they have said, so, the Crown needs to respond to this, and they've asked us a few questions around what that response should look like and what kind of system that we could put in place that would both honor New Zealand's treaty obligations and at the same time work within our international obligations and how those sort of intersect. It looks like we're most likely to get a sui generis system, which is what the tribunal has recommended, but there's still going to be some interaction between what we would call Tonga or Tonga-derived works. Um, and copyright law. It's pretty much unavoidable. Just to give you a sense, this is the beginning um, of the 262 decision. If you sort of want to go and Google it, you can read through it. Um, 
there's like a 200 page version and there's also like a thousand page version. Much of it's around flora and fauna, but a significant amount of it is around work that would be covered by copyright if copyright were a wildly different and less colonial law. So, MB have said very specifically that they want certain things from the public. So, they want us to focus on the problem, not the solutions they have said. Um, they want us to consider the objectives that MB have laid out. Uh, they want us to back it up with evidence. And the problem with this is that different people at different places in the copyright system have access to different pieces of evidence, right? So the CMOs are going to have one batch of evidence. The libraries are going to have one batch of evidence. Uh, my organization is going to have one batch of evidence. Uh, hopefully, MB will then get all of this evidence transferred to them and will then be able to make decisions that will be really good and will be based, in fact, in evidence. Uh, and tell us the things that are working well. So they don't just want to hear everything that's wrong. They also want us to tell them if things are working well, what those things are, uh, and what they should leave alone. So if you were interested in making a submission, which I know at least some people in this room are going to be, uh, this is sort of the framework that MB have laid out for doing that. Uh, and you have until April 5th to put all of that together. Thank you. <laughs>